So the next topic is moment of inertia. And this is also the last topic for this term. So as, as usual, let's have an introduction. So, so many engineering formulas involve the use of a mathematical expression in the form of integral of y squared dA, uh, sorry, integral of rho squared dA, where rho is the perpendicular distance of dA to a reference axis. So rho is the same as your x, y, r, etc. So it's just a distance of an element to your reference x axis. Now, this is used so often, it's given a name, and that name is moment of inertia. Now, there are two concepts that can be referred to as moment of inertia. So one of them, area moment of inertia, refers to the resistance of a body to bending, while the other refers to resistance of body to angular acceleration, and that's mass moment of inertia. Now, what do you think is the type of inertia we'll be focusing on in strength of materials? Area moment or mass moment of inertia? Good Lloyd and Francisco. So this is a new topic, so it's also new presentation. Okay, so Sosa Legado. Okay, very good. We're focused on area moment of inertia. So area moment of inertia, again, measure of resistance of body to bending. It's also used, to, uh, used for flexure formulas for beam stress. So you're going to encounter this again in future design subjects or beam stress and flexure formula. It is also known as second moment of area because each differential area multiplied by its moment or gives the moment of area. And then when multiplied a second time by its moment or it gives the moment of inertia. Okay, so let me explain that. Why is area moment of inertia called also second moment of area? Okay, so again, recall. Moment of area, which is this, is just AB. Element times distance for summation of AB. Now, if we're talking about very small elements, instead of summation, we're using the integral. Okay, recall from your integral calculus, integral also means the summation. Okay, so that's your Riemann's integral. So moment of area is integral of differential area times distance. And let's call that, that distance is rho. So rho dA. Okay. So this is your first moment of area. I'll we'll specify this as first moment of area. Now, what if I multiply this by rho again? Okay, that's your second moment of area. So, multiplying this term, your rho dA, by rho again, then 
what you get is integral of rho squared dA. And that is moment of inertia. Okay, so that's why moment or area moment of inertia to be more specific is also called second moment of area. Okay. And then mass moment of inertia, as mentioned earlier, is measure of resistance of body angular acceleration. So correct area moment is for strength of materials. Mass moment is for dynamics of rigid bodies, which is not the scope of this course. Next, let's have the equations. So moment of inertia is denoted by I. So I equals rho squared dA. Now rho is a general distance. So if we have a reference x and y axis, rho can be either x or y. So moment of inertia about the x axis, meaning we're using y distances. So that's integral of y squared dA. Likewise, moment of inertia about the y axis, we're using x distances. So that's integral of x squared dA. Okay? And then next, after moment of inertia, we also have polar moment of inertia. Inertia. Okay. So it is possible to get the moment of inertia of a quantity for dA about the pole O or Z axis. This referred to as the polar moment of inertia. So we have moment about x, moment about y axis, that's just moment of inertia. If you have a moment about the z axis, also known as your pole O, we call that polar moment of inertia. And polar moment of inertia is the moment of inertia for an area relative to a line or axis perpendicular to the plane of the area. So again, the plane of our area is usually the xy plane. Perpendicular to your xy plane is the z plane or z axis or again your pole O. And then in terms of measurement, polar moment of inertia is the measure of resistance of a body to torsion, i.e. twisting about a given axis due to an applied torque. So once again, we have torsion here. So these are our equations. So J sub O, that just means Polar moment of inertia about pole O is integral of R squared dA, where R is the distance of your element to your pole O or Z axis. Okay, and then once we solve for that, you'll see that the final equation for polar moment of inertia about the Z axis is just I sub X plus I sub Y. So let's derive that equation. So polar. moment of inertia. Okay, so let's have your x and y axis. I'm going to draw this 3D, okay? Okay, so this is your y axis, your x axis, and then this is your pole z, uh, pole o, okay, or just z. And then your area is on the x y plane, so it's along this plane. So let's draw that. That's your irregular shaped area. And then we're taking an element. So this is your DA. Now let's get the distances. So this distance of your elemental area, or differential area. So distance of that from your pole is this length, right? So imagine this is perpendicular to this area. So this is also the perpendicular distance to this axis. Okay. And then when we solve for that, you'll see that 
is just the hypotenuse of your right triangle and we have this okay and then this is your y bar or, or just y distance y from your x-axis and then this is your distance x from your x-axis and then again this is your row and row is just r as well okay and then computing pythagorean theorem r squared is just x squared plus y squared therefore if you use a general equation for polar moment of inertia which is again r squared da so integral of r squared da subbing in this value so integral of x squared plus y squared da and then let's separate that integral of x squared da plus integral of y squared da now these terms should be familiar to you because just the equation of moment of inertia about your x and y axis okay so let's rewrite so j so o. this is polar moment of inertia about the y axis so i sub y plus this is polar moment of inertia about the x axis so i sub x and that is your equation okay so it's easy to find polar moment as long as you know moment of inertia about x and y axis next we have radius of gyration the radius of gyration is the uniform distance from the reference axis at which an entire area may be assumed to be distributed it's used to compare how various structural shapes will behave under compression along an axis so again this is mostly used in your design subjects and then it's used to predict buckling in a compression member or wing so buckling is a form of failure and we need to prevent that so radius of gyration is denoted by k this equation is uh, square root of i over a again i is moment of inertia so radius of the gyration about the x-axis is integral of i sub x over a and then for y it's i sub y over a and then about your pole o or z axis it's j sub o over a now let me illustrate what the definition means So radius of gyration. So let's say we have an area, well, your axis, right? And then your area. So we have an irregular area. So radius of gyration is taking this area and then distributing it normally or uniformly along your axis. So let's say our reference axis is the x-axis so this area will change from this blob to this length okay so the distance of area of the area is uniform from the x-axis okay and then the distance of this area from the x axis is your k of a sub x. Okay, so that is what that means. So, this is uh, useful in again simplifying our equations because instead of taking this oddly shaped area, we just have a strip with uniform distance from your reference axis. Okay, next we have the parallel axis theorem. So the parallel axis theorem can be used to find the moment of inertia of an area about any axis that is parallel to an axis passing through the centroid and about which the moment of inertia is known. So we have I sub X equals I sub X bar plus ADY squared. I sub Y equals I sub Y bar plus ADX squared. And then J sub O is J sub C bar. 
plus AB squared. Okay, so these three equations state that the inertia for an area about an axis is equal to its moment of inertia about its parallel centroidal axis plus the product of the area and distance of its centroid to the axis. So to simplify, we have two axes. Your reference, so your x, y, and then centroidal axis, x prime, y prime. If you know the answer or the equation for the moment of inertia about a centroidal axis, you can use parallel axis theorem. So instead of solving as is, like what we've been doing earlier, where we have an irregular shape uh, and then dividing it into simpler shapes and then taking the distance of its elements to your reference axis. Instead of doing that summation, just know Ix bar, Iy bar, and Jc bar. And then just add area, total area, times distance of its centroid to your reference axis. Once again, let's try and get or derive that. Uh, let's make everything smaller. Okay. Parallel axis theorem. Okay. So again, let's have um, your reference axis. Your oh, no, no. reference axis x y, and then let's have an irregular shape. And then centroid is here. Okay, that's your centroid. And then along that centroid, you have your reference uh, centroidal x and y axis. Okay, so we'll call that x prime, y prime. Okay, and then let's use the basic equation inertia is integral of rho squared da so let's say x let's take moment of inertia about the x-axis this axis and that's integral of rho squared or in this case y squared da but again we don't have a direct distance y so let's just use rho squared okay and then what is rho this is your rho okay that's the total distance. And then to get that, okay, so let's say you have an area because we're just using differential areas. Let's see here and at that point. The distance of that element to your x axis is this, right? And then let's call that distance y, okay? And then the distance of your x-axis, the uh, centroidal x-axis to your reference x-axis is dy, distance y. This is not differential y, okay? This is distance y. Okay, and again, rho, sorry. Rho is distance of element to your reference x-axis. Okay, and then from that, rho is just a summation of dy plus y. So y plus dy squared dA. And then let's solve. So integral of y squared 2y dy plus distance y squared da and then let's separate each term integral of y squared da plus integral of 2y dy times da 
and then plus integral of dy squared dA. Now, integral of y squared dA, y being the distance of your element to your x-axis. So that is the moment of inertia about your centroidal axis. Okay, so let's just call that ix bar. So this bar represents moment of inertia about your centroidal axis. Again, centroidal axis is just the axis passing through the center. Now, what about this? Integral of 2y dy dA. Now, let's just take a look at what is integral of y dy or y dA. Okay? This is actually equal to 0. Why? Remember, we have a sign convention. Uh, distances above and to the right of your axis is positive, below and to the left is negative. So let's say if we take this dif differential area here, right? This distance is the same here, but negative. So the answer for these two elements cancel out, okay? Because this is positive y and then this is negative y. So that's why it's zero. Again, because. Distances cancel out. Again, because we have negative and positive, depending on where your element is. And this is the centroid or centroidal axis, so your area is evenly distributed through this axis. Okay? Plus zero. And then integral of dy squared dA. So dy, can anybody tell me, is that a constant or a variable? Distance y of centroidal axis to reference axis. Is that a constant or a variable? Okay, correct. Correct, Michelle. And Francisco. Leon Legado. Why is it a constant? Because no matter where your element is, the distance of your reference x-axis to the centroidal x-axis is the same. The position of your axis do not change. That's why this distance y is a constant. So meaning you're going to be left with integral of dA. The integral of dA is the same as integral of dx. What's, this, what's the integral of dA? DA, integral of DA. Oh, sorry, integral of DA. Correct, Michelle. Correct, Jose, but you're already two points. Correct, Rafaela. Leon Pangana. It's A. It's just A. In the same way, integral of dx is just x, or to be more specific, x plus c. So we have dy squared times A, or just A. dy squared times A. So final answer. My x, moment of inertia of your shape about your reference x-axis. Is moment of inertia about centroidal axis plus area times distance y squared. Again, this is distance y, not differential y. And then it's just the same along the y axis and polar axis as well. Okay? And again, ix bar, iy bar are moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. Next. So in the same manner, the transfer formula for polar moment of inertia and radii of gyration are respectively. So J is J bar plus AB squared, similar to and J sub O equals JC plus AB squared. And then K squared is K bar squared plus B squared. Okay? So that's the concept, or those are their concepts. 
Any questions so far? Please answer in the chat. Okay, since you don't have questions, let's move on to our examples. Number one. Okay. So you might be wondering, how are we going to get our centroidal moment of inertia? We're going to use integral of y dy, or x squared dy, or y, y squared integral of x squared dA or integral of y squared dA. So these are the examples on how to get centroidal moment of inertia. So let me just fix this. Determine the moment of inertia for the rectangular area shown in the figure with respect to letter A, centroidal x-axis, letter B, the axis passing through the base of the rectangle, and C, the pole or z-axis perpendicular to the x-y plane and passing through the centroid C. So we're looking for centroidal axis, a moment of inertia about centroid, about the base, and about the z-axis. So let's start with letter A, centroidal moment of inertia. So to do centroidal moment of inertia, let's first take an element. Okay, since our equation is uh, i x bar equals integral of y squared v a. So we're going to choose a differential area. So it's already shown here. This is your differential area. Okay. So y squared, and then the equation for your differential area. So this is a rectangle. I chose a rectangular element. Base, since this is base over 2, base over 2, so this total base is just b. Times height. And the height is your differential y. So meaning this is a very, very thin strip. So b, b, y. Okay? And then, we want to know from what value. So if we just did this, the answer to this is an equation, indefinite integral. We want a definite integral. So considering this is your x-axis, so this strip will move from this point to this point. Okay? And then considering the total height is h, distance from... Centroidal x axis to this point is h over 2. So the lower limit is negative h over 2. Upper limit is positive h over 2. Okay? So we have an even function. So if you remember from your integral calculus, if you have an even function, you can rewrite your integral into integral or twice the integral of y squared d dy but instead of negative h over 2 that's just from 0 to positive h over 2 okay next figure out what's constant so you can factor it out of your integral so from this can anybody tell me which term is constant very good, Colin and Lauren. It's B. To uh, Perry. Okay. So obviously, dy is not a constant. That's your differential. y squared changes depending on where your element is. So that's not constant. Base is the same no matter where your element is. So B, I can factor out. So 2b, then what's the integral of y squared? Integral of y squared dy. Correct, Rafaela? 
and Simon Cero. y cube over t. So n plus 1 over n plus 1. And then evaluate from 0 to h over 2. So just sub in these values. So you'll get, I'm going to factor out 3 as well, just to make my equation shorter. And then sub in h over 2, h over 2, cube minus zero cube over two. So that's just zero. And then simplify. Two cancels out, you get bh cube over ah, no, this is two cube, so never mind. So 2bh cube over 8, 3 times 8. And then simplifying by x bar for a rectangle, bh cube over 12, right? This becomes 4. And there. So now you have the equation for the centroidal axis or centroidal moment of inertia for a rectangle. Okay, so just keep this in mind because you're going to use this in future problems. Next, let's solve for letter B. Passing through the base of the rectangle. So, base. So, this is your axis. Now, luckily, our centroidal x-axis is parallel to that, so we can use parallel axis theorem. So remember, ix is just i x bar plus a d squared. Okay, and this is distance y squared. I x bar is b h cube over twelve plus total area is just b h, right? And then dy squared is this length, which is h over 2. So h over 2 squared. So let's mark that out. Uh, this is also dy. And so h over 2 squared. So now it's just a matter of simplification. dh cube over 12 plus b h cube over 2. And then combine, I'm going to multiply this by 6. Ah, sorry, 2 squared, 4. Then I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3. You'll get b h cube over 12 plus 3 b h cube over 12. You'll get 4 b h cube over 12. Simplify ix is bh cubed over 3. So this is moment of inertia about the base of a rectangle. So once again, this is an equation that you can keep in mind. Okay. Okay. That's b. Then lastly, let's have letter c. Polar, uh, the pole, moment of inertia about the pole or Z prime axis perpendicular to the XY plane and passing through centroid C. So that is this, or pole O or Z axis. That's just polar moment of inertia. So we're looking for J sub O. And since it's passing, passing through your center or centroid, that's IX bar plus IY bar. You already know what ix bar is. That's bh cubed over 12. And if you can recognize the pattern, you'll know that iy bar is hb cubed over 12. But in case you didn't see the pattern, 
we can go through figuring out its equation again. So IY bar is integral of, now instead of a horizontal element, I need a vertical element. So I'm going to draw that. I'll just put it here. Okay. I'm going to get a vertical element. And then this is dx prime, right? So it's distance from your y-axis is this. So this is your x, x prime. So this integral of x squared dA. And again, dA is the area of this rectangle or differential area. So that's just base times height. Base is dx. Height is h. So we get x squared h dx. Once again, this element moves from this left side to this right side. This is your centroid. So to the left, this point is negative b over 2. And then to the right, this point is positive b over 2. And then, this is another even function. So we can simplify this. And then we know that h is constant from the previous problem. b is constant. So here, h is constant. So this becomes h or 2h from 0 to b over 2 of x squared dx. We already know the integral of x squared dx. That's just x cubed over 3. So I'm going to factor out 3. So j sub o is dh cubed over 12 plus 2h over 3 integral of x cubed from 0 to b over 2. over 3. This is b cube over 8. And now we simplify again. bh cube over 12. This cancels out. This is 4. So you'll get h b cube over 12. So this is the centroidal moment of inertia along the y-axis. Then if we simpli simplify this further, you will get dh over 12, okay, common factor, times h squared plus b squared. And that's the final answer. Okay, so that is number one. Any questions for number one? Please answer in the chat. How about the others? Please answer as well. Do you have any questions? Okay, great. So since we're out of time, I'm going to end it there. So again, keep in mind these are the equations for central centroidal moment of inertia, moment of inertia about the base, and polar moment of inertia. So this is sort of like a derivation of equations for moment of inertia of regular shapes. Next meeting, we're going to solve for equations for a circle and then apply those equations for shapes that has that have measurements already. Great. Uh, 
on Saturday, you'll have your quiz number two. Coverage is, uh, quiz number three, coverage is centuries. Okay. Also, I've already uploaded your IP exam two and your extra credit for two. So just check that out to see if you need to answer the IP exam. Okay. Since you don't have any more questions, you may go. See you next meeting. Goodbye, class.